Good morning, folks. Noctilucent clouds on NASA's Earth Observatory, also called polar mesospheric clouds. A bit of synchronicity as these are part of a longer video I'm trying to get done for later today. Fingers crossed. But for those who don't know, these are 10 times higher than the wispy cirrus clouds. Scientists were still puzzled over their formation when they also began recently being sighted across the globe. The rare Arctic phenomenon is now neither of those things. Saw the first tremor on the northern mid-Atlantic ridge, got a quick capture, but hours later a swarm had enveloped the region on RSOE. This is a significant swarm in an unusual location. Also at a 5.1 in Nicaragua, 5.7 in northeastern Russia. Volcano in New Zealand not only still active but showing signs of restlessness. Two cyclones in the area. Oswald was my focus three days before he got a name and I had actually written him off. Meanwhile, Gary is an island threat only. Neither storm will imminently become hellacious, but these are significant events. Staying down under for the storm that hit Chinchilla over the weekend, causing flooding and damage to crops and infrastructure. UK taking the worst of the leading edge of these low pressure systems. There is a serious dynamic circulation driving air masses of highly different potential together. Once more, we will see high speed wind gusts and a lot of precipitation. Meanwhile, the Americas asked the jet stream, how low can you go? Arctic air is currently flown south on vacation due to the recent polar vortex split during the sudden stratospheric warming of early January. The wind will continue moving south as some residents in Michigan find themselves in a dangerous situation. Last I heard, power was not fully restored and with negative temperatures Fahrenheit coming, that's unacceptable. Cosmic ray density falling further, almost under 99. The solar wind speed in yellow dropping after the CME impact. Green temperature dropping as well while the density in orange is stable. You can see that waning disturbance on the Fluxgate magnetometer. Likewise, the last baseline induction is around 1400 UTC. Unfortunately, that last one did allow plasma to briefly penetrate into the system. Rockabye sunshine, quiet as can be since the exit of that big boy. As he departed, just north of the solar equator, another active region was born. This will be a traditional bipolar spreading region where the leading and trailing umbras are opposite polarity and the development happens in the middle as they spread. Looking now, we can see that development and the beginnings of the magnetic mixing could be gamma class by tonight. So we got this large coronal hole set to face Earth today. But to the right of it, something interesting occurred. Energetic surface events appear to have rippled off the edge of the opening in the magnetic field, actually lengthening the bottom leading extension of the coronal hole. Last quake watch only had one significant quake. I wouldn't expect much more now, but the watch is called for based on this coronal hole. Hopefully, I'll get that longer video done shortly. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.25 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.